Hello, I'm Lord Jimsicle, and you're watching a Halloween special of You Have Issues, a programme all about comics. Batman is a creature of the night, there is no doubt about that, but as we all know, he is just a man. Batman has an answer for everything. Superman out of line? Bring out the kryptonite. Martian Manhunter giving you a bit of trouble? Just light up a match. Apart from being a dick to his teammates, my point is that he always has a trick or two up his sleeve, but I don't think anything can quite prepare him for the new chap in power. I am of course talking about the Batman Dracula trilogy. This is an Elseworlds tale that began in 1991 with Red Rain, which depicts Batman's battle with the infamous Dracula. There have been a slew of murders in Gotham's homeless population, all with a common theme of slashed throats, but after a bit of digging it turns out that the slash marks are to cover up the wounds made from a vampire bite. The only way Batman could obtain the power to defeat Dracula is to become a vampire himself, and thus gain immense powers typically associated with vampires. While the trilogy is named after the battle between Batman and Dracula, said battle only takes up the first part. The second instalment, Bloodstorm, depicts Batman coming to terms with his transformation and what effect it has on him, his allies, his enemies, and Gotham City itself. The final instalment, Crimson Mist, chronicles Alfred and Commissioner Gordon's quest to bring an end to Batman's rampage of killing Gotham's criminals. What gives the story more authenticity is the incredibly ominous artwork. Kelly Jones's pencils do a superb job in depicting Gotham in such a scary and demonic way with lots of Transylvanian influences when showing the city. This is particularly the case with Wayne Manor and of course the Batcave. You could say he really puts the goth in Gotham. His design of Batman himself is very distinctive and emphasises the demonic aspects of his image such as the longer bat ears and the organic wing-like details on his cape. And this is all pre-transformation. This depiction of Batman has carried on to Jones's other works featuring him, such as his run on the main Batman title in the mid-90s. Oh, imagine if he did a variant cover for Blackest Night. Oh, it's a missed opportunity, really. Les Dorshide and Greg Wright's colours are nothing short of spectacular. The use of paints in particular has a vibe very similar to the horror comics of the 1950s. The font used in the narration boxes takes a bit of getting used to, but it fits the story very well. Despite all three parts being released a few years apart, great care was taken so that the artwork, character designs and general aesthetic of the original story remained intact and thus provides a seamless experience of the whole trilogy. It's definitely a unique part of Batman's publication history, so much so that it's been referenced quite a few times. In Countdown, The Search for Ray Palmer, Jason Todd, Kyle Rayner and Donna Troy travel through the multiverse tracking down the Atom. One of the places they search is in fact Vampire Batman's stomping ground. There was also an animated movie called The Batman vs Dracula, which was based off the animated show The Batman, though this had little in the way of transformation other than a dream sequence. If you want to read another unique take on Batman, then this one's for you, because it's definitely a classic. You can pick up the entire trilogy in this trade paperback. It's just called Batman Vampire. Thank you for watching this Halloween special of You Have Issues. I'm Lord Jimsicle. Please subscribe so you can check out more brilliant episodes.